right, all right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Man Up Already podcast. And as always, just super pumped to be here with you all today. Man, I am. I, I just think about our podcast and I think about what's happening in 2023 and, and the growth that we're having, the people that we're having, um, the the advances that we're making. It is really awesome to see God move in the podcast. And um, man, it, it, it hasn't stopped. So I'm, I'm proud and pumped to announce that manupalready.com is, has been revamped. Uh, my great friend Bill South um, took care of that. And ma- if go out to manupalready.com now, it's a, you can buy the book there. Um, it's got a whole new look. And what you'll see as the featured uh, attraction on that website is the Man Up Already Growth Conference. Um, we mentioned it last time, but now it, it has it has really solidified. We 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 put the date as April, and or mentioned the date as April last uh, podcast episode. But the date has changed. It's June tenth on a Saturday here in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Good, great location, amazing venue. It's going to be powerful. It's five hours, nine a.m. to two p.m. And I'm bringing in speaker after speaker that if you are a man, I would get your butt to this growth conference big time because you will walk out of there um, empowered. You will, I mean, what? here's a great question. What life-changing, life-altering growth event do you have on your schedule for 2023? And whatever that is, I'm going to make a bold statement that we're going to 10X it, right? If I borrow from Grant Cardone, we're going to 10X it at the Man Up Already Growth Conference and and impact you in five short hours. It's going to be awesome. So on manupalready.com, that's where you can get on the emailing list for um, mess, you know, uh, postings on on what's happening with the growth, growth conference. You're going to be able to buy tickets on, on that website. So get out there, check it out, get on our mailing list um, and uh, stay tuned for updates on what's happening. Um, and you know, a, a big part of that conference is me bringing in the the men that I hang out with, speak with, the men who impact my growth. I mean, I, the lineup is is just stellar, and uh, I'm excited for our guest today because he's one of those dudes. Now he won't um, be speaking at the event, but he is a guy who is in my posse. He's somebody I've learned from over the last four to five months. He's a relatively new connection. But this guy's just absolutely awesome. Awesome! I'm so proud and humbled to to be in his circle, um, and grateful to have him in mine. And let me tell you a little bit about uh, our guest today. Our guest today is Michael Delon. Michael Delon um, creates credibility. Um, that's his. He is a credibility expert. He is a brand expert. He is a marketing guru. He is the president of Paperback Expert and helps business owners publish a book that positions themselves as the expert in their field. Michael um, is sought out by business owners to help them clarify their brand strategy, make them best-selling authors, and set up a profitable podcast. Um, They use his credibility marketing strategies to gain more clients, get more referrals, and grow their revenue. He is a best-selling author. His book is out there on Amazon. Um, it, the book is called On Marketing. I've read it. There's some great nuggets in there. Um, if you're if you're looking to grow your marketing, get out there. Get Michael's book on marketing. He is a husband and a father of four, a committed follower of Christ, deeply involved in his church. And you can always find Michael spending time with his family, reading a great book, or facilitating growth in the lives of others around him. Guys. We're going to have a very powerful conversation, so please welcome my good friend, Michael DeLon. The audio on my end with Michael was a little off than normal. I apologize for that. Joys and <laughs> agony of um, technology, but um, still an incredible, incredible conversation, and uh, I'm super pumped. So let's bring Michael on. Michael, welcome to the Man Up Already podcast. It is an honor and a privilege, man. I... I when I knew, you know, we were having this dialogue on my calendar, I was like, I woke up this morning pumped because you're just a guy that you, I just shared with you, you, you bring such value to my life. Um, and I know that you do for so many people and it's Thanks, just an John. honor and a privilege to have you here and have this dialogue. Thanks, John, man. I appreciate it. Uh, it, it is fun how God has knit our hearts together, me and you so quickly. And, um, we, we both have the same heartbeat. So I'm I'm honored to be here. It's going to be a great conversation. Thank you. You know, and I want to, it just came to mind, you know, you and I connected on LinkedIn. Yeah. 
right? And it's such an example of the world today in, in, you know, people tend to be closed off and, you know, if I don't know them, you know, it, you can, it's very easy for people to be cynical and put their guard up, right? But when we let people in, it could be some of the most incredible connections and relationships that get birthed out of that. Um, and I don't remember, I know that, I, I don't know if it was me connecting with you or you connecting with me, but it was something about your energy. And I think that yeah. that's so important for people to get that in the online world today, right? You and I have not been in the same physical space, I am. right? But we know each other and we know each other well. And I want to you know, part of the theme of the podcast is, you know, writing a book to be able to convey that to people. I think I know you way more. I mean, nothing. I know you way more just from reading your book. And I knew you well before that even happened. Yeah. Right. But in the in the virtual world, like things have changed. Right. We can let people into our lives just be, just because we didn't break bread with them or they weren't in our home. Right. And they can live across the country like you and I do. We can still bring incredible people into our world if we um, have the mindset that they're out there. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and just a couple things on that, John, for our listeners. With with the online world, it's very stale. It's very curtained, right? And in too many times, especially like on LinkedIn, a lot of people are doing outreach and they're using automated bots and all kinds of stuff. And it sounds salesy. And that's the worst thing you can possibly do, right? I think one of the things is I was reaching out to you, right? We looked at your profile. I was like, okay. I sent you an audio note through LinkedIn. And so you immediately got to hear me. Mm. Yeah, that's different. And then after you connected, you said, hey, yeah, you know, maybe let's talk or whatever. Then I, if, if, if my system worked, I sent you a Loom video. And then you get to capture me and who I am. And that resonates. And then we get on a Zoom call and then we talk. And so I intentionally try to insert myself and my personality and everything that I do because it is about relationships first. And I think we, we're missing that in business right now. Yeah, agreed. I think we're missing that in life, right? Like, absolutely. Ab absolutely. You know, and, and you said something, again, that I think is worth mentioning because I've, I've emulated a lot of that to, to bring the, the relational side of who we are to other people. And one of the pillars in my book, as you know, is authenticity, right? Bring yes. you to the space in which you're in and you're using technology to do that. Sending an audio file, Loom, which I then, right, got on. Right. And it's funny, you said, I use you, Loom all the time. And I was like, well, if Michael's using it, I'm using it, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it really is such a great tool but I love that you're um, focused on how do, and you said something really important, which is a system. Yeah. How do I ingratiate myself and bring myself right into people's world so that they like, trust, and respect who I am? And I think you do an incredible, incredible job of that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. I, one, you know, one of one of my foundational principles in in business primarily, but it's all of life is people are going to buy who you are more than what you do. Mm -hmm. And I invest a lot of time, effort, and energy on, on putting myself out there genuinely. This is who I am. If you don't like this, don't set a call with me because this is all you get, right? Right. But when you're magnetized to this, well, let's have some conversations. And and I really, really <laughs> wish more people would, would start putting themselves out. In however way you do it, just be authentic and genuine. You know, and, and, and it's something that I always love mentioning is, <clears throat> and we can, I want to hear your story and then, and then the mission that you're on. But one thing that I have figured out in, in my life and the success journey is how important self-concept is, right? How important um, loving who we are, being okay with who we are, right? There are things that we're good at and things that we're not. Totally. And, and, yeah. and, right. And I, I think, and I would love your take on this, that the more you confidently put yourself out there, which could be a very, um, you know, non-confident kind of feeling, right? But to say, you know what, I'm going to step out there. The right. more you do it and the more you, the more you one, learn about who you are, the more you learn about how others see you and you, you, you're you okay with who's not in your camp and who is. Yeah. And that I think just by doing that, you build self-confidence because you're just taking that risk that as you and I both know, most people don't do. 
Yeah, they they don't. It's really funny, John, because you know I love mm-hmm. video. Doing I do lots of video and things. And a few years ago, I didn't do any video because I didn't have a great studio. I thought I had to show up on video looking like and sounding like I what I thought my prospect thought I should look like and sound like, and that was awkward to me. And I thought I scripted everything, so I didn't do it. And so finally, I just went. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to show up. I'm going to be Michael. I'm going to stutter and stammer and repeat my, and, and that's okay because that's what you get. And it freed me up. It really did um, to, to build that self-confidence and to share with people. And, and I, if I haven't told you, I'm going to tell you now that John, I'm only good at four things in life. Okay. I'm wicked good at these four things. But outside of that, I'm mediocre at best at most <laughs> things, right? Comes to finances, dude, I'm terrible. I'm, I'm praise God I met my wife and married her. She's amazing, right? So I make the money. She manages it and gives me my allowance because I'm no good at it. So it's finding what you're really good at, staying in your lane, bringing a team around you of people who do other things better than you. I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. I think that's where I find the most joy in life is, is watching others grow doing things better than I could ever do them to go out. Thanks for making me look so good. I appreciate that. And it's such a key concept in this man up already mindset yeah. that I call is look, God gifted you, Michael, right. With certain qualities. And, and there are things he made you uniquely you, he made me uniquely me and everybody listening. We are, I like to say there never has been, nor will there ever be another right. one of you or me or, or, or anybody else. And yeah, being okay with that. And then I love what you talked about, which is, is, you know, I remember John Maxwell talking about this so much is surrounding yourself with people who are strong in our weaknesses. Absolutely. And and building that posse. And you are like, you're in my posse. Like I think about you, I'm grateful, right? I talk about the power of your posse. You are in that circle for me that if I have a question regarding marketing or or things with book or heck, I need, I need a man up already. Who am I talking to? You're, (laughs) you're one of those guys. Thank you, brother. That that, that means a lot to me. Yeah, I love it. That that's what I, that's what we want to do because especially for men, because men typically are pioneers. We're lone rangers, and that's not right. We need we need community. I just came out this morning. I've got a, a Bible study with a group of guys, about seven of us. We've been meeting for seven years every Friday wow. because we need that, right? And I look forward to that every week. And we challenge each other and grow each other. Um, men need other men because yeah, men sure. are lonely. And we need to man up and reach out and build a posse. See, I got you speaking the language. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I got the lingo. This is great. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, so let's dive into your story, um, how you got. Now, for our listeners right, who don't know you, your expertise is your company now is helping people become an author. Yeah, to create a book without writing a word. Yeah, people call me the paperback expert and, you know, and, um, because that's, that's the name of our company is Paperback Extra. So love that's it. what we help people do. I love it. My wife and I are both followers of Christ. We've been married since 1990. So that's about 33 years right now. And in the 90s, for the first five years of my marriage, John, it was like this. Mm-hmm. My wife and I are complete opposites in every way. And even though we both grew up in church, nobody ever taught us how to be married. And so we fought. We had conflict. Well, after five years, we went to a family life marriage conference. And sat in a ballroom with a thousand people as, as family life unpacked God's blueprints for marriage. I didn't know he had any. And so we grabbed the blueprints. We started applying them. Our marriage grew. And during that time, we had we had two of our, our, our two sons during the 90s. Um, I was working for Christian Radio and I was in sales and marketing. So I'd come out to you and say, John, I can help you with your business, try to sell you some advertising. I found out after two years, nobody wants to buy Christian Radio. They want to sell their products and services. Mm. And so I had a decision to make. I, I could either become really good at selling and learn all the strategies and techniques, or I could become really good at marketing. So I chose marketing. I bought the books, went to the conferences, followed all the gurus, and learned how to do marketing for small business owners. And so through the 90s, my business grew as I helped my clients' business grow. At the end of that, about 2000, God led us out of the, the radio into a startup.com. Now, do you remember when Amazon was just getting started, when when William Shatner was on the radio talking about the world's largest bookstore? Yeah. That's when I moved to a dot com to sell websites and banner ads to hospitals and car dealerships who didn't even have these things. And that company, John, was ahead of its time. 
Mm. That means that means it went bankrupt. And so after two years, I stood in my in my living room in my house looking up at the ceiling going, God, what am I supposed to do now? And he spoke to my heart. He says, Michael, I want you in a ministry to marriages and I want you at family life, the ministry that changed our, our life. I said, cool. So we raised our financial support for two years as missionaries, moved from Indiana down to Little Rock, Arkansas, which is the world headquarters for family life, and started serving in the radio department. Mm. And I thought I'd hit nirvana, man. Why would I ever do anything else? And so I started climbing the corporate ladder. Six years later, I'm on the leadership team of family life. And everything was going great until we started going through corporate reorganizations. Third reorganizational chart was laid out and my name disappeared from the leadership team. Wow. And so they started shuffling me around the ministry to do other things. And that began a two year, what I call prison term yeah. when I was in a job I hated at a ministry I loved. So after two years, I got tired. I said, God, I got to get out of this place. It's killing me. And he's like, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go help small business owners with marketing because they struggle with it. And I love it. And he said, go. So on January 1st of 2013, I escaped from prison and I started a marketing consulting firm here in Little Rock. I'd call you. I'd say, John, I think I can help you grow your business. You'd meet with me. We'd have a great conversation. And you'd say, Michael, tell me, who have you helped recently? What have you done in the past and, and who have you helped? I said, well, I've helped build marriages and families at Family Life. And you say, Michael, that's honorable. Way to go. Oh, look, look at the time. Mm -hmm. I've got another meeting coming up, Michael. Let's reschedule and you'd usher me out the door. I wasn't getting any clients because you saw me as a ministry guy, not a marketing guy. So I knew I had to fix that. So I went to my church one day, second floor. I was pacing the hallways back and forth, crying out to God saying, God, how do I help John? Because I know I can. And God gave me this idea. He said, take all of your marketing ideas and put them in a book. So I did. So I wrote my first book on marketing back in 2013. Then, John, I'd call you. I'd set an appointment. I'd mail a copy of my, of my book to you. I'd walk in your office about a week later, and there it was. My book was on your desk, dog-eared, highlighted, underlined. You'd read my book. And in that meeting, you say, now, Michael, in your book, you said, how do you help me do that? Mm -hmm. And you'd hire me. And the next guy hired me, and I started gaining clients. I thought, well, this is really cool. Why don't business owners do this? Well, as you know, it's really hard to write a book. There's a lot to it. So I went back to my church, sat down in the Sunday school room, built a spreadsheet, listed every single step it took me to create my book, and built a system and a process to eliminate every step for business owners. And that planted the seed that has now grown to be paperback expert, where we work with experts and business owners to help them create a book without writing a word. And then we teach them how to use that book to gain clients, get referrals, and grow their revenue. That's a long story. Was it in your book? Because I just read your book, right? And your I, book is in my thinking spot. So it's 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 really great. I did not know it was a 2013 book. Um, yeah. So it's still applicable today oh, for sure. Um, but did you, was it you who said that uh, how many people are in the world versus how many people have actually written a book? Was that in your book that I had read that? I don't think so. Okay. If it is, I, I don't remember writing yeah, that. I remember, I, I had heard that statistic, you know, like that, that the fraction of people oh, that, that have written a book in this yeah. world. So people see you as something other, right? They just yeah. see you in a different light because you've done that process. Yeah. Yeah. In, in our culture specifically, in our culture, experts have books, period. I mean, John Maxwell, why is he who he is? Because he started a years and years ago doing tapes and books and books and tapes and more books and books. Right. And how many books has he written? Right. What about um, uh, Dave Ramsey? Is he that smart? No, no. He's got some basic principles that he borrowed from Larry Burkett. He's just a really good marketer. So he started with a radio program and a book. And now he has multiple books. So we we look at people who ha who are authors as authoritative, as credible, as experts. It happens in the mind. Marketing happens in the mind of your audience. It's how they think of you, which makes all the difference in the world. And when they see you as an author, it, it causes them to say, Ooh, they lean in. So that mm -hmm. it, it's a massive mindset shift for your audience. You know, one of the things that I think is, um, is interesting, it, and it plays into this whole self-concept 
conversation, but there's so many people listening to this right now that they, they, they're saying to themselves, you know, what Moses said, who am I? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right? But who am I? What do I have to say? What value can I bring? Yeah. And my answer to that is, you are the only one that has your story. You're the only one that has your thoughts, your ideas. You are an expert in something. Yeah. Right. Oh, because totally. you've lived a life. Like, so can you speak to that a little bit on, you know, just helping people get past that barrier of worthiness? Yep. Oh, ab absolutely. And, and it's everybody has a story to share. If you're doing something in business, you're an expert at whatever you're doing. Okay, because you're smarter than me in what you are doing. So that's where your book's going to be created. And you have a story to tell of why do you do what you do? So let me give you let me give you a, a case in point. I had a, a personal injury attorney call me a, a number of years ago down in Florida, and he's in a very competitive market with two Goliaths who are mm -hmm. spending like 100000 a month in marketing. And my guy's like, I don't have that. I can't spend that. So we got his story and I said, all right, William, why are you in Florida? Well, he came from the Northeast. He went to Florida for a baseball scholarship. He was going towards the pros. He was that good. Second year in college, he's, he threw his arm out, had to have major surgery and rehabilitation, all this, killed his baseball future, killed his scholarship. He pivoted. He got a degree. He ends up becoming a personal injury attorney to help people who've been in car wrecks, accidents, things of that nature, right? I said, William, have you ever told that story to anybody? He's like, no. I said, good, we're going to. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we, we, we took that story and crafted his book and published his book. It's called When Life Throws You a Curveball, What to Do After You've Been in a Serious Accident by William Franke, baseball player turned attorney. Now, when he walks onto the morning show or he's on YouTube videos or whatever, he says, hey, has life thrown you a curveball? Did you get bit by a dog, fall at work, get hit by a truck, and you weren't expecting it? I totally understand because that's what happened to me. And I want to walk with you through this process and get you the settlement that you deserve. Why don't you get a free copy of my book? Let me mail it to you, and then let's talk about how I can help you get back on your feet. Do you think that message resonates with that audience versus we just settled a big truck accident for $18 million. Call us now. <laughs> That's, you're really good at that, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it just blows my mind. But everybody listening has some kind of a story or a background that they're not using in their marketing that will connect you with your ideal audience. That So it's it's less about how important am I and how smart am I? No, it's being real. What we talked about at the beginning, being personal, being real, telling me your story. And it doesn't have to be like that. Um, it could be almost anything. It's just finding that and then using it to position yourself differently than everybody else in your industry. You know, first off, that's such a great um a great story it's a great story of of how you were able to help somebody do that and if people are on the youtube channel here watching the video of this it's a great freaking cover like I'm, Thank you. the covers of that book is phenomenal Here, i'll show it again just yeah, yeah it's really great it. um but I, I you know one of the things that i when i talk about being created for purpose mm. oftentimes mm. people are blocked by what they're currently doing like it's very easy to get sucked into the day and day day by day routine of life and you're doing things and you're getting older or time goes by and, and people every day wake up and they go work a job that has nothing to do with their creative purpose right like yep. and what i why i wanted you on the show today is because you are helping people do that right you are literally helping people unlock their story. And for so many people, and, and maybe it's a, you know, because the world changed post COVID, we mm -hmm. call it the gig economy. I got a side hustle, whatever. But I think that people have a story that can be told that, you know, maybe it's not a grand business, but I believe in the spirit of entrepreneurship. And I think we live in a time where more people can help more people just being who they are and what they've learned and getting that message out there. And maybe that unlocks somebody to say, maybe I don't have to be 
a school teacher like I was, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I loved helping people, but that was the wrong vehicle for me long term, right? And I think today it's just easier to help people discover that purpose and get that message out, especially with what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I thank you. And I, and I, I think it's right. And I think, you know, as, as we discover stories like, like Williams, right? What the counsel I give people is, you know, all right, I've got eight questions that I ask a client in order to find that story and to dive in deep. But you don't have to come to me, take a friend out to a coffee shop or something or a lunch spot, hit record on your computer, your phone, and have them ask you questions about your background. Where'd you grow up? What was your family size? What were your hobbies? Um, what'd you do in sports? Why do you live where you live? Right? Why do you do what you do? And as you answer those questions and then go back and listen to them, you're going to hear a theme or two or three. And that's going to hopefully fire you up. And then you start crafting that, and that becomes your story. Now, do you have to put that in a book? No. You could do videos, right? You could you could write blogs. Just be yourself. I, th I think books and videos and podcasts are the three best ways to communicate in our culture today. And – I think if you it, once you find that that sweet spot, that story, that passion that you have, communicate it. And if you don't have a podcast, find people who have podcasts and be a guest. But communicate who you are and encourage other people and live out your purpose with passion because God has created you uniquely. And one day I'm going to stand in front of him, John. He's going to look at me and say, what would you do with the gifts I gave you, Michael? Yep. Yep. And I'm longing to hear him say, well done, buddy. Well done. Come That's on. That's why you and I get along. I don't know if we've ever talked about that, but you and I have literally the same vision on life. Really? Like literally, I, I get I, I, my, what drives me is at that moment, right? I call it, I want to walk off the game field of life and God pat, pats me on the butt and goes, well played, right? Yep. Like that, that is, That's that it. is it. You know what I mean? And I think that sits in a lot of people. They just don't know how to take that first step, how to, how to, you know, get out of societal trappings, all that stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. So I'll give you my six word mm. phrase. And I got challenged a couple of years ago to create a six word phrase for life that just encapsulated my DNA, my passions. And I went six words. How would you ever do that? Well, it, it took me a, a couple, three weeks, but I got it, John. And every morning, I've got a prayer sheet. Every It's at the top of my prayer sheet. It's at the top of my daily activity list. Ready? I'm ready. Live this day for that day. Mm. And brother, that centers me every morning to go everything I do in personal, in the way I treat my family, in business, the way we interact here. I want to do it so that on that day, Jesus will say, well done. Now, I fail a ton in that, obviously, right? But that's my vision. That's my purpose. That's my centering. That's that's where I get my passion to live vibrantly for Christ because that's the vision. So I love that we're on track with that. Yeah, that's that's so good. You know, it, it's – I. There's so much in my head right now on 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 this because I think, you know, look, I mean, we're recording this. It's February 2023. And, um, you know, we're watching and I've been posting about it all week. You know, the Grammys were just on not to go off on a major tangent, but the Grammys were on Sunday night and there was a, a spectacle on there that was just, um, you know, not not really healthy. Right. Um, right. And and then we've seen, you know, from the biggest stage in the world, lies spewed out. Uh, and again, I'm not going to turn this into a political podcast, but I think if people just had a mindset that one day there is going to be an accounting for what we oh, do yeah. every right. single day, regardless of what somebody's faith is, right? Like, right. it's just there is, right? It's not random. Life is not just you just existed and then you didn't and there's no right. repercussions. We answer for our actions. There is an accounting. And I love that mindset that today I will live for that day. I'm, I am I love that. I think that that alone you, can help so many, so oh. many people. I think oh, you would need to write a book on that concept, Michael, and just challenging. I, you know, <laughs> if only I could find somebody to help me with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's awesome. It. So. Um, I want to dive into a little bit on 
on marketing, you know, yeah. not, I mean, Men Up Already is, is not necessarily a business podcast, but I think in today's day and age, everybody needs to learn some aspect of marketing because if we have these on, which we're in mm -hmm. front of, somebody yep. is either marketing to us, right? Or we're anchored in who we are. And I think anchoring yourself in who you are, part of that is if you're going to be on social, like my wife literally this morning was like, turn it all off, turn the phone off, turn the computer off. We're going to move in the middle of nowhere. And I said, well, if you could figure out a way right where you can earn income without any of that you know let me know i'm, I'm all in if that was exactly. possible but it's not right like yeah. so if we are in this technological age then the the noise is either coming in or we're arming ourselves and 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 at least i'm not saying put it out where you have to inundate people with who you are but i think there needs to be some of that hey i'm grounded in who i am and here's here's i'm telling that story so and and i think that all has to do with marketing not just in business but in in in, in certain aspects in life so i'd like to talk about that a little bit it does yeah so so when i wrote my book and and you read about it there's a definition of marketing in my book because when i was writing the book i i searched google and i came up with you know hundreds of definitions of of marketing from scholars and things none of them made sense to me so i created a definition of marketing that marketing is everything you do to gain and retain a customer, period. Now, with that said, how do we show up in this very cluttered world? And it comes back to having a crystal clear message that resonates with your audience and your story. If you look, John, at Financial advisors websites, mm -hmm. attorneys web, it doesn't matter. They all look like they were built about 20 years ago. They have stock images. It's 99% text. And the call to action is usually schedule a call with me. I'm not ready for that yet. I'm researching. Give me an opportunity to, to get a free copy of your book, to watch a video series to download a white paper to do something and in, in, in my book you know i've got this alphabet maze thing and, and in business we want to take somebody from a first meeting to z happy client as fast as possible because we need the movie right the problem is between a and z there's a great big b through y that the customer has to walk through and they walk through it at different paces and different speeds it's okay are you going to be there for them and so in marketing, you've got it's too many business owners spend too much time, effort, and money on the front end, the 3% of people or less who are in the market today for what you offer versus focusing on the 97% of people who are going to need what you have to offer in the next three months, three years, three decades. Right. Okay. I had a guy book onto my point, book on my calendar last week. I looked him up in my CRM system. He has been on my list for seven years, getting my emails, opting into my conferences, doing the webinars. He is now ready to create his book. And because I was the first one he thought of and the one he felt the best about, he booked a call. That's good marketing. Yeah. Okay. That's what we need to look for. And through all of that, I'm just continually showing up and giving value value and answering the questions that he has in his mind that he's not articulating because they're all the same in marketing. All business owners struggle with the same things. So when I do content, I'm trying to answer those questions of, John, how can I help you connect better with your prospects? Have you ever done Loom, John? Do you know how much money I make for you using Loom, John? Nothing. I don't care. I get great value because you said you've helped me, Michael. My mission in life, I haven't told you, my mission statement is to facilitate growth in organizations and individuals. I love it. If I can do that, I'm successful. I'm loving life. You've helped me live that out by saying, Michael, you've helped me do this. Praise God. I want to do more. Right? And so as you show up and get away from posturing and posing to say, oh, I've got the right answer for you. I've got this. I can help you this. I've got this product. No, 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 no. Save that for later. Tell me who you are. Answer the questions and the challenges I'm having. Give, 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 give. 
And guess what? God, God, God brings business from all over the place. I'm usually running down a pathway like this straight ahead, and God brings business from the side. And I'm like, but I'm not doing anything over there. Yeah. How often and does that, that happen, right? It's so incredible. Yeah. All the time. So we started a, a few months ago, John, a, a credibility networking event. Every month, one, once a month for 90 minutes, we get together. We bring businesses, business owners together. And we talk about credibility marketing and networking and, and business. Absolutely free. Anybody can join it. And it takes my son and myself time to get that set up every month. And we don't care because we're pouring into people's lives. I know it's going to come back to me in revenue in some form or fashion. Whether you ever become a client or not, You, I, I'm now top of mind in John's, John's mind. And when people come across you to say, you know, I've been thinking about writing a book. I, I know the guy. No, no, no question. That That is what we do. That's how we grow our business is by through relationships and giving. I, I mean, we do marketing and we reach out and we do all that stuff, right? But it's, it's purposeful. So as you're thinking about anchoring in who you are and doing marketing, be genuine. And dude, we, I would love if we had time today or another time to just talk about two or three simple marketing like Loom. I bet a lot of your audience doesn't even understand Loom, what it is or how even to use it. We could unpack that for them so they have some practical takeaways or my gifting service or whatever it is. That's what I love to do. I, we're, we can talk about it right now. And here's why. Because – and I know you predominantly operate in helping business owners, right? That's a big part yeah. of, of your business. But you said something. You said everything we do to gain and retain customers and where my went, mind went – in today's day and age, it's everything we do to gain and retain not just customers, but people, relationships, friendships, oh, totally. right? Yeah, yeah. You have to, if, you, if you're dating, if you're married, it, you're marketing to that person constantly, right? Friendships, friendships only last if we continually do everything we can to yeah. retain, to gain and retain those relationships. That's right. So I think they can, that's why I wanted you on the podcast. I think all of this stuff is incredibly relevant to life and it's so much easier in the digital space, which is such a great segue into, let's talk about you, the tools that you use. Loom has become something um, that I use um, and you can use Loom bit for business or personal. I think it's just a, an incredibly All great time. tool. Let's talk about some of those things. All the time. Okay. And I just put a link in chat, John. Um, and, and, and the link goes to my website where it's a page for trainings, free trainings that we've done um, one of them is on Loom, and I've got about six different trainings there people can take absolutely free because what we do is we teach what we do. And so if people go to that that link, if, if it came through. Um, Why don't you just say it because there's people listening. Okay, it's paperbackexpert.com and then forward slash trainings with an S, trainings. Yeah. Um, it's just there's there's all kinds of free stuff there. Just go. Um, Loom, L-O-O-M.com. Just go there and sign up. It's a video-based system where you can send really short videos or long, I think long videos too. Um, here's how I use it, John. So after I have a, uh, when somebody books onto my appointment, onto my calendar for an appointment, and it's usually you know a week away, I grab their email, I respond to it using that, that email that comes from like Calendly, right? I just reply to it. Yep. And I say, and I do a video, short videos, personal, I say, hey, John, Thanks so much for scheduling time for us to talk. I am really looking forward to getting to know you more and seeing how this creating a book might be um, the next step in, in your business. I can't wait. Um, I'm going to send you a couple emails with some videos you know, to watch between now and then. They'll be really helpful to answer the five questions most people ask me. Can't wait to talk to you. Have a great day. And instantly, instantly your credibility goes through the roof. Goes through the roof because nobody's ever done it. I can't tell you how many emails I get back on. Love the video. Wow. Great. So I do that. And then they get on the call with me. We have a great call. As soon as the call's done, here's my thank you system. Nobody says thank you any, anymore, by the way. I've got a whole system around how to build thank you systems. As soon as the call's done, I, number one, send you a loom. John, thanks for that call, man. It was so good to get to know you and your business, and I can't wait to help you take that next step or whatever, right? Boom. I actually pull out one of my thank you cards and I hand write a thank you to you and I mm -hmm. mail it to you. Number two. Number three, hang on. I use a, I use a company and it's part of the, the train on the trainings page. There's a gifting uh, training. Um, how to, how to, uh, how to build a gifting system that makes prospects and clients say, wow. Okay. It's a system that, that I've built with a company called gift hopper, gifthopper.com. And after that, John, you would get a box like this. 
in the mail, direct mail, okay? Direct mail is not dead, by the way. It's really, really good. So you get a box like that. If you get that in the mail, are you going to open it? <clears throat> yeah, say yes. So you open the box, right? And it has a nice little note, note in it with my brain. And it says, John, just so you know, we are nuts about working with you. One of my favorite childhood memories is my dad bringing cashews home from the mall. I hope you can take a. I hope you can make a memorable moment with someone you love, Michael. That's the note. Now you dig through all the nice little paper stuff and you pull out a wonderful, lovely bag of cashews. I get more response on these gifts than probably anything we do. Mm. When was the last time you got a wonderful food gift? So now you had a call with me. You got a loom from me. You got a personal handwritten thank you in the mail from me. And now you get a gift from me. What does that do to my credibility to your heart? Remember, I want to capture your heart to convince your mind. We all make decisions emotionally first, then we back them up with logic. How much marketing do you see today going after your heart first? Very little, very little. We all go after the mind. Why? I'm going after the heart. I want you to love me. I want to become a household name. I've got people, I've got prospects and clients emailing me, John, saying, my kids love you and the candy you send to my house. Good. That's why I do it, right? Those are two systems, John. Three, loom, the thank you system, writing a handwritten thank you in the loom, and then the gifting system. If, if your audience would do those three things, their business will begin to grow because they will position themselves differently. And, not, and, and here's what I want the listener to get is because I'm just overcome with it because in very small ways I've been doing this in life, but I'm going to kind of go macro and then work my way micro. Yeah. We are called and it's wired into our DNA by God to give, right? Yes. To, to, to give to others, mm -hmm. right? And, and immediately, right, people go, I got to give financially, not it's not just financial. It's give of your spirit. And you just laid out an entire system of somebody to give of themselves to another person and make their lives better. I'm I'm overwhelmed by how amazing what you just laid mm -hmm. out is because it's so easy to go, wow, that's a business thing on people can, you know, about clients. What people literally you you connected with someone, a relative, you sent a loom. Right. You sent a card. I'm just thinking about you. Right. And then drop the little candy gift that said, "You, I just appreciate you. What would that do for the feeling of people with people? Absolutely. Brother, um, I do. I use Loom for my pastor, my youth pastor, admins at church, the children's lady who nobody ever says anything to. I send her a loom and say, thank you for serving every Sunday to those kids. It's so important. I so appreciate your labor for the kingdom. She was in tears, John, mm -hmm. because somebody stopped and did something personal and said, thank you. You can use this technology for anything. All right, let's take it one step further. Your listeners may not have loom, but I'm willing to bet, John. I'm not a betting man, but I'm willing to bet they all have a smartphone. Yep. All right. I did this this morning. I, I opened up a text. And so I, I two, two things you can do with your smartphone. You can text. That's one. You can do an audio text. So I, yep. I, I husband, wife, I was driving past their house and I audio texted both of them and said, hey, Pete and Margie, I just driving by your house thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Pray for this, this, this. Three specific things. Love you guys a lot. I guarantee it's the only audio text they're going to get today. And then second, Secondly, and I did this uh, yesterday, is pull up your text message, find somebody who you're going to text, go into the message area, and then hit the camera icon, you know, mm -hmm. flip it around so it's you, hit, make sure it's on video, hit record, and record like a 30-second video text. John, man, I so appreciate you having me on your podcast. It was so much fun. Can't wait till the next time we meet. Have a great weekend, buddy. Boom. Tax has like 100% open rate. It's video. Nobody else has ever done that. Do that for birthdays, anniversaries, just to say hi. Again, you're, you're doing something nobody else is doing. You do these little things. It adds up incredibly well, and they're super simple to do. Yeah. So don't make marketing complex. It doesn't have to be. It's so good, Michael. Like, like I knew you'd bring it today, but you <laughs> just like there's moments where 
um, and and we've been on here for for a good clip. But I there my kind of philosophy is when you're reading a book and you come across something that just hits you in a way like the nugget is just rich, right? Yeah. Stop and just process that. Yeah. What you just laid out to me is the entire reason for being on this podcast. Like I mm. just think if if the man up already movement, I, I I've learned because I'm putting together this conference. Did we did I tell I, you about that? Right. Yep. In April, I think. Yeah. It, well, it could be June now, so okay. we're still working on it. We, we we may be going to a bigger venue. Um, but I realized this past week that my goal for the conference and my goal for just the man up already movement is for people to go. I can be better and, and I need to start doing the work. Like yeah. there are experts that help people do the work. Right. And then there's, I, I'm here to help people realize there's work to be done. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's my mission. Like, I love what you talked about. My mission is to help wake up people to the greatness inside of them and wake them up to that, that there's work to be done. And then I can point to here's who you can go. If you, if you haven't found that person. But what you just did is it, it improves the relational condition between people. And I think in our world today, we need that more than ever. Like I'm just blown away with, because I'm looking at it going for me, my gosh, how much more could I be doing that I'm not doing, that the technology is sitting in my hand, right? And we just, right? We're just checked out. We're drifting. You know, one of my favorite books is a book called Outwitting the Devil. And he talks yeah. about drifting in that book. Yeah. And everything gets us to drift. And if we continue to drift, well, the in the spiritual warfare conversation, the enemy wins, right? But if we can get yeah. focused and talk about what you're and do and apply what you just said, I think it's freaking brilliant, dude. Hey, thank you. Let, let me let me uh, pick up on drifting just uh, for a minute. I read a book years ago called um, Anchorman mm. by Steve Farrar, who's passed away now, but Anchorman. And he had an analogy in there about um, and it's all about men, right? Being an anchor man in Christ for your family, for your church. And he said out in San Diego, they have a, a naval base and all these ships, these massive ships are there. And he says at, they bring the ships in and they anchor them, massive anchors, right? And he says, what happens if, if those anchors would get disconnected from the ship? What happens? They drift and, and they smack into each other. They cause lots of damage. He says, a drifting ship does a lot of damage. Mm. A drifting man does even more. Ooh, big time. So anchoring men in Christ, in identity, and in, in him, and living out of that is super powerful. So uh, I applaud you for calling men to, to wake up, to grow up, and to man up. Man up already. <laughs> love it, brother. I love it. Dude, you killed it today. Thank you so much. You're welcome um, for being so we did mention it paperbackexperts.com is expert. your expert. Yeah, just expert. a singular paperback okay. ex, because you're the expert, right? Paperbackexpert.com. Perfect. And where else can they find you out there? Everywhere. But if you go to paperbackexpert.com, you can connect me. That is like the hub of the wheel of all things, Michael. So I try to give one call to action that's super clear. Paperbackexpert.com. You can find me from there anywhere. I love it. I love it. Brother, thank well, you. This yeah, has been thank so you. much fun. Yeah, absolutely. Should, I learned should, so much just talking to you. Dude, I was going to say, it should be a sin to have this kind of fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It's great. <laughs> you know, and 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 again, just to to just to, to hammer hammer the point home as we wrap up, right? For people out there, do something. Like I remember when I started the podcast, I didn't know anything about somebody just recommended an app called anchor. And I was like, Oh, you mean I can record and upload and I started the podcast, but I just look at it now, five seasons later, you're in episode probably number 62. And I just, if I didn't have this, that goal that you just had wouldn't get out to certain people. And it's just take that step. Everybody's got one and um, follow what you shared. And I, I just think life is a lot of fun when you surround yourself with amazing people like you do. Absolutely, brother. Thank you. Thanks for Thank having you, me here, man. John. Appreciate it. You know, it's always such an honor to have such incredible guests here on the podcast. And the podcast just wouldn't be what it is without our great sponsor, Master Beef Jerky. Head on over to masterbeefjerky.com. Check out their product. It is really incredible beef jerky if you're a fan 
uh, like we are. It's made here in the USA. It's handcrafted. There's no MSG. It's gluten-free. It's just freaking good. Their motto is bold flavor, tender bite, and they've got flavors uh, like their original. They've got uh, smoked barbecue, Korean barbecue, Western teriyaki, sweet and spicy mango and pineapple, carne asada, garlic pepper, a Carolina Reaper flavor, and black pepper. It is good stuff. Head on over to masterbeefjerky.com, and on your order, if you put in coupon code MUAP, you will get 20% off. Master Beef Jerky, bold flavor, tender bite, and a great sponsor of the podcast.